Hello, and welcome to HDRI in Maya, presented by Digital Tutors, an Adobe Authorized Training Center and an Autodesk Authorized Publisher. My name's Kyle, and I'll be your instructor for the next couple of hours as we explore the various techniques involved in setting up realistic image-based lighting for your Maya scenes. Now, the ability to render photorealistic images from your 3D application is a skill that's very highly sought after in the CG industry, and it's a skill that's used very heavily in feature films, games, broadcast, and architectural visualizations, just to name a few of these areas. Now, the process of using image-based lighting together with high dynamic range images, or HDRI for short, makes it much easier and much faster to achieve these photorealistic results. So we'll get started by showing you how you can use your own camera and a few simple pieces of equipment to create a series of low dynamic range images. So from there we'll take a look at how we can use Photoshop to assemble a series of low dynamic range images into a single 32-bit high dynamic range image. And from there we'll see the various ways that these HDR images can be used in Metal Ray, the different methods of optimizing your render quality, as well as many other time-saving tips and workflows that are specifically designed to make you a stronger, more efficient rendering artist in Maya. Alright, so in this first lesson, before we start to talk about the process of capturing any sort of HDR image with your camera, or utilizing that in any kind of a 3D application, let's first take just a few minutes to talk about what is an HDR image. Now, HDR refers to high dynamic range. Now, the term dynamic range refers to the amount of contrast that could be found in any kind of an image. It's really the range of values that lie between the absolute brightest points of your image and the absolute darkest parts of your image. That range of values is your image's dynamic range. You may also hear this referred to as an image's contrast ratio. Now, most of the images that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, whether those be images in a magazine, on television, or images on the web, those are all considered low dynamic range images. And that's really due to the fact that the medium that these images are found on, whether it be paper, our television screens, or our computer monitors, all of these mediums are only capable of displaying a very limited range of color information and a very limited range of values. So these are all considered low dynamic range images. Now, uh, as far as the image format that these low dynamic range images reside in, these are usually 8-bit images. Now what that means is with an 8-bit image, you usually have three color channels, red, green, and blue. And each of those color channels is able to hold 256 color values. So, zero is going to be the absolute darkest part of your image, and 255 is going to be the absolute brightest point of your image. Now, for most situations, like I said, that is perfectly acceptable, but when it comes to things like image manipulation, that does give you a very limited range of colors and color values to be able to work within. So, for example, if you were to uh, look at the value of 128, which is going to be a 50% gray, there really is no color value between the levels of 128 and 129, right? That is the limitation of an 8-bit image. But if we introduce a 32-bit image, which is considered a high dynamic range format, this 32-bit image can actually contain much, much more color information than a standard 8-bit image. And the way that it's able to do this is that it's able to store these floating point values. So I can actually choose a color value that is 128.3 or 128.357 or even 128.35762. You know, the, the list goes on and on. There could potentially be thousands and thousands of color values between the levels of 128 and 129. So as a result, this 32-bit image can actually contain much, much, much more color information than an 8-bit image. And really, this 
uh, type of a file format is going to be necessary to contain or uh, actually hold the information or the full dynamic range of your scene. And as we'll see a little bit later in this training kit, having this full dynamic range in your images gives you the ability to uh, make very fine adjustments to the image. It uh, lets you uh, gain a much more realistic view of your scene. And as we'll see even a little bit later in our training kit, we can use this full dynamic range or this extended lighting information that's contained in this file to give us very, very realistic lighting in any kind of a 3D environment. All right, so let's go ahead and get started in our next lesson where we're going to talk about some of the settings that you're going to want to have uh, set on your camera if you want to be able to try to capture any sort of an, a high dynamic range image format.